Hi, this is Julie Fast for the International Bipolar Foundation. I'm a board member for the organization, and I'm also the author of Take Charge of Bipolar Disorder, Loving Someone with Bipolar Disorder, and Get It Done When You're Depressed. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 1995, and then given a separate diagnosis of a psychotic disorder many years later, when we realized that I had a lot more psychosis than the average person with bipolar. So I am on a crusade to educate people about the difference between mania, depression, and psychosis. Psychosis is not the same thing as mania, even though many people who have bipolar one are often psychotic at the same time that they're manic. So if you have bipolar one and have been in the hospital in a manic episode, there's a really good chance you've been psychotic as well. So what's the difference? Well, mania is all about energy. Sometimes the energy is considered positive, which is euphoric mania, and sometimes it's considered negative and aggressive, which is dysphoric mania. You can watch my other videos on the topic, and there's lots of information on this website about what is mania. But the thing to remember about mania is that it truly is just about energy. It's about high energy. And whether that feels good or doesn't feel good, it still means you don't need to sleep and you're not tired. You're overly interested in goals, hypersexual, your frontal lobes are turned off so you make a lot of really bad decisions, and you just sort of go for life with a gusto. It has to do with thinking, but a lot of it is behavior as well. Driving fast, moving really fast, changing the eyes, changing in the body. The voice gets really fast like this and you get really excited, you interrupt people. So you'll notice it's very speedy and it's very filled with energy. That's mania. Psychosis has nothing to do with energy. Psychosis is about thoughts and beliefs. So when a person's manic and they are also psychotic, how do you tell the difference between the two? Well, somebody who has had both since I was 16 years old, I'd like to explain by telling some stories. So when my former partner was in the hospital in a manic psychotic episode, I got to spend three months in a psych ward going and visiting him, making sure he was okay, and being around a lot of people who were in manic and psychotic episodes. Little did I know that later in life I would also be diagnosed with the same illness. We were so young at the time, we had, neither one of us had been diagnosed. So people with mania had a lot of energy, they'd be running around the halls, but when they were psychotic as well, they had symptoms of psychosis, which are put into two categories, hallucinations and delusions. Hallucinations, which are the first part of psychosis, involve seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, or feeling something on the skin that's not there. I've had hallucinations all of my life. So hallucin all of my adult life, I should say. So for example, when I was 16 years old, I used to go to a bookstore when I lived in Hawaii, my favorite books, I'd have fun, and suddenly I'd hear a voice that said, Julie, you need to leave. And I'd look around and I'd say, who said that? There was nobody there, it was just me. And that was my first vocal hallucination. It was called a command voice. As I got older, I started to have hallucinations that were visual. I'd see rats run around chairs. I often would see myself with blood on my hands or that I'd been injured or that I'd been bitten by a dog. They would roll on like movies. Those were hallucinations. I often feel that I smell funny. I'm like, have I had a bath? Ooh. So I always know if my smell is off, like I'm smelling like everything's rotten. I know that I'm in a hallucination. I can have odd tastes in my mouth and I feel like someone's touching me always on my right shoulder. It's like, is there somebody back there or somebody can, I can feel a touch. Those are hallucinations. The second part of psychosis is called a delusion. Delusions are not actions. They're not even thoughts. They are beliefs. And here's why delusions are so hard to treat. Think about something you really believe in. Is someone gonna convince you differently? It would be pretty hard. So when a delusion is around in bipolar disorder, when someone's manic or depressed and they're also psychotic, it is very hard to shake that belief. They really believe it. The most common delusion is paranoia. Somebody's talking about me or everybody else is doing stuff but they didn't invite me. And are they, do they have a conspiracy against me? Conspiracy theories are delusions, paranoid delusions. Another thing is that you're being filmed, that someone's following you, or that, for example, you are in a movie of life and you're not really a real human being and you're just pretending to be human. That's a delusion. So paranoia is one form of delusion. And then you have other ones that sound like hallucinations because they involve seeing something that's not there. But... 
until you've experienced delusion, it's sort of hard to explain that when you think that you're being filmed, it's not that you actually see a camera in the corner filming you. You just know it's there. If you actually see a camera, it's a hallucination. But if you're pretty sure you're being filmed and that everyone's talking about you and that the government is using these films for a nefarious purpose, that's a delusion. So now how do you explain the difference between mania and psychosis when they're entwined? Look for the energy in terms of mania. So here's an example. A young girl tells her mom after staying up all night that she's going to be on a reality TV show. And she says, Mom, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I spent all night just planning this. I have packed my bag. It's a show in Florida and they are ready for me and I am ready to go. And I have all my bag ready and I have my outfits ready. Now I know I've never been on a plane before, but I am ready. I called and I made all of the appointments. I used your credit card. I hope that's okay. That's mania. But then if she says something like this, but mom, mom, you need to know that they've already started filming the reality show and the cameras have been all over the house and I've been preparing. So they already have all the footage. I'm going down there to help them edit it. Now you've been recorded as well, but it's okay because I'll make sure that you look good. But, but the cameras are everywhere. And of course the mom is freaking out and going, what is she talking about? Because you can handle the manic stuff. Oh, she's just really excited. She wants to be on a reality TV show. Um, maybe this is just a dream of hers and someone did call her. She's a very bright student. I mean, she's really good on camera. Maybe they did call her. But then when you get the whole camera thing that you're already being filmed, that nobody can know, then you've moved into the world of delusions. So here's an example. Mom, now... Inside these flowers, there's the camera is there. So I've made sure that I place the flowers exactly, I carry them around and I place the flowers wherever I'm gonna be doing something because I know I'm being filmed. No, 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 if you if you try to look in those flowers, you won't find anything. They're nano cameras and they're they're smaller than even a leaf. And so I've tried to look for the cameras, but I can't find them, but I know that they're in there. That's a delusion. When you are around somebody who's manic, You'll often join in with them, especially if it's euphoric, and you get involved and you, you understand it because mania is simply a heightened version of the person. It's a high energy version that's not really bizarre. It's weird, but it's not bizarre. When you move into psychosis, you've hit the world of bizarre. So here's an example. I wrote the outline for Get It Done When You're Depressed when I was in a manic episode many years ago before I learned to just really control my mania. And I remember being so excited and I sat there and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and it came out, it was an easy breezy outline. I drew graphs, I was creative, I got out my paints, I did my charts, I was very excited, I didn't sleep, I went out and partied that weekend. This was almost 12, 13 years ago. I had a great time. I was dating somebody. I couldn't wait to tell him about it. I knew I was going to get a book deal. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. That's euphoric mania. Whereas when I started to write the book and the pressures of having a book deal got on me, I wasn't manic anymore. And I was depressed and often psychotic while writing this book. And I remember having thoughts such as, am I, am I writing something that's not real? Like maybe the book deal's not real and the whole thing is a joke and I'm on some kind of program where they're trying to trick me and maybe this isn't real. And then I would have thoughts that why aren't my friends calling me, you know, you know, my friends, they, they're going out and they're not telling me about it. And I don't like this. And I'd send an email and I'd say, why aren't you talking to me? And of course, my friends were like, what is up with you? I called you three times. You didn't answer. So mania was that creative stay up all night party, sleep with guys, do all of that stuff that's manic. But everybody can sort of handle it because it's just high energy. But when I moved into the depression... I don't feel good. I'm never going to finish this book. I don't, I don't know who I am. That's depression. And then into the bizarre. Is this project even real? Uh, 
Am I being filmed? Is someone following me? I moved into psychosis. I've had psychosis all of my adult life and simply didn't know the difference. Mania and psychosis are treated differently because mania means you need to sleep and you need to get your energy down, whether it's euphoric or dysphoric. But psychosis means you need help with managing thoughts. And that's very difficult when you really believe those thoughts and when you're in the middle of a psychotic episode. That's why so many people who are manic and psychotic have to get hospitalized, where many of us who are depressed and psychotic often don't tell people what's going on because we don't know what's happening. Here's a story from before I was diagnosed. I went to the University of Washington and it was really hard for me to go to college. It was my fourth college, possibly my fifth college, and I didn't know why I was always crying in class, everything was difficult, and then sometimes I would study for a test and I'd get a 4.0 without any problem and had a photographic memory. So I was mood swinging. And I remember one day walking along a path. This is in Seattle, Washington, and it's very beautiful, but it's often sort of, you know, damp and there's lots of leaves everywhere. And I remember seeing a bag of leaves and just saw a dead body. There was a dead body in the bag. I could see an outline of it, etc. That was a visual hallucination. I remember one day walking on the path and seeing a leaf and thinking it was a severed hand. And then I'd look, it was a hand, I'd look up and I'd say, what was that? And I'd look back down and it was just a leaf. That was a hallucination. Often when I was in class, I would get the idea that everyone was closing in on me. I'd put my sunglasses on and start to cry because I was positive everybody in class knew something that I didn't and that the teacher was very upset with me and something wasn't right. That was a delusion. That was a paranoid delusion. I lived with that. It's a miracle that I graduated from college. So if you're struggling with bipolar disorder, are you also having hallucinations and delusions and not knowing that they can be a part of the illness? If so, if you've heard something, seen something, smelled something, tasted something, or felt something on your skin that's not there, and it feels real like a movie, or if you are often paranoid and think someone's out to get you, someone's stealing your ideas, someone's filming you, people are mad at you and you have to go, are you mad at me? Did I do something wrong? Am I in trouble? It's time to talk to your healthcare professional about it. Now to end this video, I know this is a lot of information, so just take it in and what feels real for you, you can use. What doesn't, then you can pass it on to somebody else. I'd like to talk about schizoaffective disorder. That's actually my real diagnosis. So bipolar disorder is a mood disorder that affects a person's ability to regulate the mood. We have depression and mania. That's it. Now we can have secondary symptoms such as anxiety, attention focus problems, anger, irritation, and psychosis when we're manic or depressed, but they will always be attached to a mood swing. But then you have someone like me. When I finally started talking, especially to my co-author, Dr. John Preston, about all of the things I was hearing and seeing since the time I was 16, he was like, Julie, you have a lot of psychosis. This was about 20 years ago, and I started to write it down, and yes, I have a lot of psychosis. When I'm anxious, I get hallucinations. When I'm in a crowded room, I get paranoid. I can sometimes feel that someone's watching me, following me, that cars are too close to me. I have to be very, very careful about this. And I can have these psychotic symptoms when I'm not depressed or manic. So if I have full bipolar, and yes, I do, I have constant depression and mania, I can be psychotic while depressed or manic, and that still falls into the bipolar diagnosis. But I also have hallucinations and delusions, the two main symptoms of psychosis, when I'm not depressed or manic. I have what I call anxious psychosis. So that means that I actually have a separate psychotic disorder. It doesn't mean schizophrenia. It just means that I have a separate psychotic disorder. So when you add bipolar one or bipolar two with separate psychosis as I have, it's called schizoaffective disorder. And yes, it's important to know this diagnosis because if I didn't know what psychosis was, I would have thought that it was just a part of my mania and depression. So I didn't tell people, I just assumed, well, they've diagnosed me with bipolar, everyone must have this, nope, I have a lot more psychosis. Now schizophrenia is actually a psychotic disorder that involves many different symptoms and it has nothing to do with bipolar disorder. So know that schizoaffective is not schizophrenia. You can have bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, but those are two different diagnoses. 
There's lots of information on the International Bipolar Foundation website where you can learn more about it. You also can read my books to learn more about bipolar disorder. And then I write a lot about psychosis on my own blogs. So I hope this is helpful. If you have bipolar disorder and you have mania and depression and you have hallucinations and delusions when you're manic or, or depressed, that's just bipolar. But if you're like me and you hear things, see things, smell things, taste things, or think something's touching you that's not there, or you have false beliefs called delusions and you're not manic or depressed, then talk to your healthcare professional about schizoaffective disorder. Thank you very much. This is Julie Fast for the International Bipolar Foundation. Thank you.